Hello. <clears throat> well, uh, this past Sunday, I, uh, went to the theater and, uh, saw, um, <clears throat> Scarface for its, uh, 40th anniversary. Now, I've talked about Scarface a few times on my channel, and I really love that film. Um, uh, probably one of the greatest remakes ever made, um, Definitely is a film that, uh, <clears throat> when it came out, it was not in, uh, beloved, you know, like now. Uh, these days it has a cult following, but back then it was criticized for the amount of violence as well as, uh, <clears throat> drug use. Also the profanity, you know, it's the first, uh, movie to have the F word said over 200 times. Um. And here I have, well, I have a couple of these, but uh, here is the 40th anniversary uh, edition. Uh, uh, got this from uh, Best Buy. And, um, you know, later at the end of the year when I have my uh, big overview of uh, stuff I've gotten the last however many months, I will have this in there again, but, you know, because I have some stuff to talk about with Best Buy and thought it's best not to talk about that all here, but, you know, uh, I also have this, which last few times I talked about this film, I used this, which, this one, which I do have the, this thing, it's just, I, it's somewhere else. Now, I know where it is, it's just I have... <laughs> I guess I'm too lazy to go get that, but anyway, um, also it's a little more flimsy, like more like just paper, but, um, <clears throat> one of the reasons I still have this and I like it is because it has the, uh, on DVD, the original 1932 film, uh, and of course the Blu-ray disc is the movie, and it has these cards, which is really cool, um, but seeing this on the big screen was awesome. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I believe I have seen this. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually pretty confident. I saw this um, uh, some time ago, years ago. Uh, I don't believe for any particular anniversary. It was just sort of like they played it at a theater near me and I'm like I haven't seen that before but on the big screen so why not and then I saw it and uh, it was awesome but seeing it again for its 40th anniversary I think it was even I don't know a little more special um, I guess because it you know was a particular anniversary that it was playing so I'm like so that was really awesome to see um, <clears throat> uh, and they had an introduction which uh, by Leonard Malton who uh, they actually played it twice I don't know what, what was going on there but uh, the first time it, they played it was like this about two and a half minutes or so I would say of Leonard Malton just sort of talking about the film and certain things about this movie and how you know it helped launch the careers of people like uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and Stephen Bauer and uh, so many other people uh, Mary Elizabeth Mastriano and um, really just helped uh, cement people uh, as uh, fantastic actors and actresses and of course you know Pacino by that point you know did the first two Godfather films did Serpico Dog Day Afternoon and Justice for All and so many of these other excellent performances he gave um and it was interesting that uh they had Leonard Malton because well because you know the film wasn't beloved initially and critics were very mixed <laughs> the critical consensus at the time at best was mixed and so um 
you know, this film was very much uh, uh, had its detractors for sure, and it still does, you know. You know, in films like, you know, or uh, The Godfather, for instance, there are people who aren't fond of it. And, you know, there's many reasons, but I'm sure why. People wouldn't be fond of The Godfather. I, I'm sure for some it's like it kind of is a bit slow um, for their parts. And, you know, nothing in some people, they might have no problem with slow films, like slow burns or what have you. But it could be just sort of slow. Um, when it gets going and the violence starts to happen, maybe the violence for them is a bit much at times, though. I, if the violence for the Godfather would be a problem for some people, I wonder what they would think about Scarface, but, you know, this has a lot more violence going on in, in this film than in the Godfather 1 or 2, even though the violence at times in those films can be <clears throat> quite brutal. Um, they used a real head of a horse in uh, the Godfather, Though, though, to be fair, that horse was already dead, so uh, you don't need to get peed on all those people who are still here that worked on that film. You know, uh, Leonard Malton was somebody who was not fond of this film, and so that made it even more peculiar when I saw him sort of introduce the, this film, which for Phantom Events, which is what... Uh, this <clears throat> was released by for their like re-releases of anniversary fil films for certain anniversaries or just because why not uh, re-release certain movies um, this was one that he was not fond of and uh, people weren't were very very surprised and um I, uh, with the 4K disc, which the Blu-ray disc on this does have this, but this is the only special feature on the 4K Blu-ray disc I found. Um, which, you know, part of the reason I didn't get this before was because um, on 4K it was due to the fact that I'm like, well, it's been a while. <clears throat> and I'll wait for like the 40th anniversary thinking they'll do something special for that and and they did but they uh got a the 35th anniversary reunion it's somebody that was mentioned in during Leonard Maltin's uh introduction to the movie as well as um was mentioned in the reunion uh was that uh, well, Oliver Stone wrote this film and uh, he uh, went and talked to people who were within the drug world as well as people with the law while he was researching to write this film. You know, a modern day remake of Scarface, but instead of it being during like the Prohibition time, it's now during 1980s Miami with the uh, Cubans coming in to Florida and a number of those Cubans have criminal records and so <clears throat> they have to be vetted and detained somewhere to until they're actually allowed to uh, 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 given like green cards and everything so that they can uh, live in Florida um and, uh, yeah, this is a, 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 a fantastic film. And Oliver Stone actually wrote this film uh, primarily in France. And he said, like, it's during the making of this film or writing this film that he uh, kicked his cocaine addiction. Um, and at this point in his career, he was just a writer. He was not a director yet. He would, within the next year or so after writing this film, he would start to write and then direct his own stuff of course he wrote, uh, wrote and directed platoon which won him the academy award for best director he already won an academy award for uh uh writing uh <clears throat> midnight express which is an excellent film 
Um, he also made the same year as a platoon, um, Salvador, with a, Salvador with a, a James Woods, and um, uh, that's an excellent film, also. But you know, from here, you know, uh, Oliver Stone's career just kept getting bigger and bigger, and uh, it's interesting how. In the midst of the bonus features, one is Scarface, the TV version, and how they have to edit it in ways so that way they edit out the bad language as well as having to cut out the uh, a good amount of the violence and you know no doubt some of the drug stuff has to be edited also because there's only so much for TV, especially back then in the, the 80s and 90s that. <clears throat> for drug use and stuff like if it was an actual like crime centric like real life uh tv shows and stuff like that um for fiction like this you, you wrote there are certain restrictions of what could be shown on tv if you're going to have drugs there's only a certain amount of, like you could like show and things of that nature but the language in the uh violence it's like at a certain point it's like man what's the point of even having this on tv like a lot of the good stuff i guess gets cut out as people jokingly say though in some cases that is i think fairly accurate certain scenes that might be violent that is also crucial to the film in it in, in certain ways is kind of essential at various points uh may be best left untouched but if it's going to be on tv especially like network television <clears throat> you definitely need to uh edit stuff like that out or at least trim it a bit to the point where you still get a bit of the violence in certain scenes just it's not as impactful because yeah you don't want to linger on certain things that happen in the film like of excessive like violence of people getting shot and everything and of course there's that chainsaw scene in the beginning of the film which is one of the most uh, uh, brutal ways to go um, even though I guess spoiler you don't see a whole lot it's just the implication of everything and certain aspects like blood and stuff that you do see it's very very intense and so even though you might not see a whole lot of it it's very very much uh you know it's very intense and impactful but yeah so it might be one of those where it's more violent in your mind than what you actually see but still um it's interesting when you actually learn how certain things are for like edited for television especially stuff like this that's very violent um, but yeah, this film is really awesome. Um, there, here is the uh, back of the movie, or the case, I guess I should say. Not, well, I guess it is in the movie, but still, the case, which is very similar to this. Um, but uh, yeah. This one has the gun. And here you get to see that the famous ending of the film. Whereas he just has the gun right there because, you know, it's a cool looking gun. And uh, there is that classic uh, tale where when Pacino got shot and he falls back and basically drops the gun. He grabs the gun, but he's like, but I just like, shot 30 rounds out of this. So I go to grab the gun, I grab it by the barrel, and my hand is now melted to it. And he had to have people come and peel it off. And for two weeks, he couldn't be able to basically recover his hand. And then when he was finally able to come back, they had to put a bunch of makeup all over it. So that way, if you see his hand at the end and... Um, that you know you would never know he he burnt his hand um, and because of that you actually see 
quite a bit of people shooting at him. Because I guess originally the plan was you were to just see him shooting at people and you would only see essentially the people getting uh, shot. Uh, like the only way you'd ever see the people he's shooting at is when he shoots them. And you see them fall and die or be at least severely wounded where death is probably intimate for them. Um, <clears throat> Uh, but I guess all those shots of everybody just shooting at him, uh, that wasn't supposed to be, uh, uh, I guess that wasn't the original plan. But because for two weeks they weren't going to be able to use Pacino, who was the real you know, lead of the film and who you pretty much see throughout the whole film, there's not really a scene that he's not in. I guess there are certain scenes with like Manny and Gina, his sister. There are certain scenes like that, that, you know, they're, that he isn't there for. However, it is also cross-cutting with him and the club and, you know, stuff like that. So pretty much, even though he's not there, we cut back to him quite frequently. So, yeah. So the inside of this is pretty cool. You know, there's a the digital copy and it's been used, so well, here is the 4K disc, which was gold, which was that was that on the cover, it was just gold. And then uh, that there. Scarface Gold Edition. I hope I see that well. Uh, looked like that to me, but I don't know. Jeans, uh, Him and Elvira. Cover the Babylon. And it's been a long time since you know I usually read Blu-ray limited edition steelbook. Um, now, generally speaking, with steelbooks, you know, I've said before, if a steelbook looks cool, I'll get it. If not, you know, I'll just get the normal thing, because usually there's nothing overtly special outside of, uh, yeah, so there's the, the, I guess, normal Blu-ray disc for uh, Scarface. And the 1930s film rated PG. We go from a, a PG rated film, though that's today's rating, to a hardcore R rating. F. Murray Abraham. And he found out he was going to be in uh, Amadeus making this film. Which I could probably uh, should talk about someday. Because that's a really good film. And these little uh, cards, what have you. Cardboard. Nothing on the back, so nothing super special. 2011, that's when I got this. So... I never knew anybody over in my life that didn't have, that didn't have a comment to them. I got that. What I have in this world is my word, my, my balls and my word, and I don't break them for no one. I don't know why I'm trying to do the accent, especially when <clears throat> I'm clearly not. <laughs> 
very good at it right now. There you go. That looks cool. I can do the accent a bit better, or his voice. Al Pacino is Scarface. And Stephen Bauer is the only one who is actually Cuban. Actually born in Cuba and primarily raised here in, in like uh, America. Uh, but yeah. Oh, he, he's the one who helped Pacino get his uh, accent. So, yeah. These are just really cool. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I mentioned I showed this before, but it's been a long time. And I know I'm not overtly talking about a lot of details here, but you know, people probably seen this film, and so it's like you, know, you already know what happens. But still, it's it, the theater ex theatrical experience was really cool. Um, a little more special because of the introduction, and. Yeah, there are a good number of people in there, though I find that if a, if you see a movie, like in the afternoon, like for something like this, yeah. Say goodnight to the bad guy. There's blood all over the gun. It's a little rude. Somebody should clean that. And there you go. Back to the beginning. So yeah, uh, this one has uh, this steel book has this, as well as the original thirty two film. Partially why I'm keeping this, though they do have the uh, uh, original film on Blu Ray. So if I ever do upgrade that, I guess I could probably give this to like my mom or something like that. I know like Scarface. The only thing is, this does not have the 35th anniversary because that was in 2018, or this is 2011. Um, but yeah, overall, excellent film. It was awesome to see on the big screen. I do like how this has like a thing for the top and bottom. Usually it's just the top, but yeah, this is cool. Though this is kind of messed up a bit, if you can see that. It's unfortunate, but overall, outside of that little mark, which seems to, because the packaging overall was good, that was not messed with, it was just probably something that happened before it was wrapped, so. Yeah, two hours and fifty minutes. It's there for in the theater for like three over three hours. So yeah, I actually stayed to, to during the end of the credits because uh, sometimes for fathom events they have something at the end, sort of like a little after the introduction by somebody. They probably come back to say something else at the end and maybe give you some more facts or interesting stuff. They mentioned uh, Leonard Malton mentioned how. You know, he was nominated for, like, eight Academy Awards when he finally won for Scent of a Woman, when sort of uh, mentioning the various uh, performers, or the performances Pacino gave before Scarface. Um, and uh, how he was nominated seven times prior to his win, and none of those actually was for, for Scarface. Now, granted, uh, I can definitely understand and see why he did not receive a nomination uh, for Scarface. The main one would have been because of a subject matter and how it was controversial. By the 80s, they really didn't want to honor too much a lot of films that were very dark um, violent and or controversial. You know, I guess 
a film being controversial doesn't have to be dark and or violent. Um, but this was uh, all of those things, and it's because of those things. How it's a very violent film, at times very dark, not just because of the violence, but just other things going on in the film, you know, drugs. That's a pretty dark subject matter already to have in a movie. The language uh, was very, oh, to people at the time, you know. Yeah, the F word and stuff had been said in films, but, you know, it was always sort of moderate. You might have somebody go on a sort of a tirade with it. It might be said uh, 10 to 20 times in a short time span, whereas it wasn't just said a whole lot. But, of course, this film being two hours and 50 minutes, that allows it to be basically a... Uh, that word <clears> to <throat> be said quite a bit, and you know, we all know as time has gone on, other films have uh, broken the record of having that uh, said more, have that word said more than this film. Quentin Tarantino, uh, uh, his 99 minute film Reservoir Dogs, has it said 270 times, Pulp Fiction, it's said like 265 times. Um, Yeah, there's a, a lot of movies that have uh, broken that record, and yeah, Al Pacino uh, is somebody who, in films, has definitely said that a lot. So there you go. Um, and Brian De Palma directed this film. I know I didn't uh, mention him, but he did a, an excellent job. Uh, he's very well known for Carrie. Um, uh, he also made Carlito's Way, as well as The Untouchables. Um, he's done a lot of films, you know, a lot, good amount of his early work is, uh, horror films. And by the eighties, like, you know, I mean, still, he, sure, he did still do horror films, uh, here or there, uh, after the 70s, but, you know, the 80s, he sort of, uh, was doing something about different things, like the genres, like, I guess, the big standouts from the 80s, I guess, from <clears throat> some of his previous works that were, like, horror-related would have been this film and The Untouchables, um, and now I'm thinking about it, there's probably at least a, another film or two in the 80s he did that might not have been horror related, but yeah. Everybody in this film did an excellent job, um, regardless of whatever accolades it got nominated for or didn't. Um, got nominated for the Golden Globes for actor and supporting actor for uh, Al Pacino and Stephen Bauer, and I believe also for the score. And the score is excellent, as is the just the music of this film. It's really, really the '80s. And if you've uh, if you've ever played video games, and then you know uh, Vice City is heavily inspired by this film, as well as uh, Miami Vice, since uh, <laughs> the state of Vice, or at least uh, Vice City itself, is basically Miami. And it takes place in the 80s, and a lot of violence goes on, and drugs and stuff, so. That's a very good game, but, you know. Maybe we'll talk about that at some point uh, later, but. Anyway, uh, just wanted to mention for its 40th anniversary, seeing Scarface in theaters, and that was awesome. Love this movie. Um. One of the best films uh, really ever made. Um, one of my favorite films. And um, yeah. <clears throat> hope all of you are, you know, doing well. I hope uh, this video was interesting to some extent. Oh, also, uh, Brian De Palma mentioned sort of... Uh, 
saying the record straight about the whole X rating thing because there's this thing where, you know, he after he got his R rating, after uh, <coughs> cutting it like uh, like three times before getting it, he uh, just put the uh, original cut back, and that's what how everybody saw it. He sets the record straight by uh, saying how that didn't happen. What happened was after like two, three times or so, he got uh, annoyed because like we can't keep cutting this back quite a bit because eventually at a certain point all you're gonna, there's nothing is going to be worth watching. So he uh, then uh, basically like we went to war and said that this is how it is and we are not going to stop until you like basically we are not gonna relent on this until we get an r rating and eventually they did so that's how the original cut of the film got to be an r-rated film instead of an x so yeah and i think i when i mentioned it one of my other videos about this film i think i sort of played that story that everybody has talked about so yeah Wanted to clear that up because, you know, uh, that's something uh, that's a misconception. But, of course, if you have, like, the 4K uh, Blu-ray that came out either from 2018 to now, you've probably known that because of the uh, uh, reunion sort of thing that they had for uh, this film. But, um, yeah. Anyway... That's Scarface. I love this film. It's excellent. Yeah. Uh, classic. Uh, the rise and fall of somebody. And yeah. And it's uh, interesting to see how uh, the rise and fall came. And also, Mark Mangolis, who is these days best known for playing Hector Salamanca in uh, Breaking Bad. And uh, Better Call Saul uh, is somebody who works for Sosa who then gets shot in the head by uh, Tony Montana because you're supposed to blow up uh, a guy who is causing problems, you know, for the cartel. And uh, that, you know, Pacino primarily does business with, or Montana does. And, uh, he doesn't want to blow it up because there's a wife and their children are there and he's not happy with kids and women getting killed especially when they don't need to so he kills them and then that just basically from there on uh, the ending of the film happens and uh, Stephen Bauer who plays Manny uh, Tony Montana's best friend is Donnie Ladio in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. So Vince Gilgan, who wanted, uh, who modeled his film or his show Breaking Bad as saying, turning Walter White from uh, Mr. Chips to Scarface, made sure to put a, a couple people who were very critical in the film of Scarface into his show. So that's just awesome. And, uh, yeah, I thought, uh, uh, I'd mentioned that in Mark Mar, Mar, Mar Golis, Golis, uh, he passed away this year, uh, may he rest in peace, uh, he was an excellent actor, um, though Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, and also Scarface is what he'll likely always be remembered for by audiences, but he did other things too, but... Uh, same as Stephen Bauer, but you know what? Hey, sometimes it's best to have at least one thing everybody remembers you for, if not a couple things. And so, and if you're in the movie world, for sure. So, this is an excellent film. Um, I could see the violence and everything not being uh, uh, things like that not being for everybody, but. If you're open to a film that you have never seen before, um, 
give this a watch. It's definitely worth it, I think. And, um, yeah. And that's all I have to say. I hope all of you are doing well. Hope you all have a great day. Hope your week has been great. Hope you'll have a great weekend and that you'll have a great uh, a week next week. Yeah. And it'll be uh, Thanksgiving next Thursday, so happy Thanksgiving in advance. Um, I may forget to <laughs> say that next week, so... Uh, if you're here in America and you celebrate Thanksgiving, uh, yeah, happy Thanksgiving. So, yeah, I'm going to, yeah, and that's, that's really it. So, yeah, take care and uh, see you all next time.